and welcome to this first video tutorial of using 25 Live here at Moravian College. The purpose of this tutorial is to walk you through scheduling an event or reserving a space using our master calendaring system 25 Live. This is not an extensive tutorial where I won't show you everything that you're able to do in 25 Live, but it will certainly serve as an introduction or a refresher. So the first thing I'm going to do is navigate to 25 Live using our single sign-on, moravian.edu forward slash login. And here I am at moravian.edu forward slash login, where I'm going to use my net ID and password to sign in. If you don't know your net ID and password, you'll want to contact the IT help desk at 610-861-1500. Once I've signed in at moravian.edu forward slash login using my net ID and password, I can see the Moravian master calendar as an option. Um, so I'll select 25 live. And here I can begin scheduling my event. Okay, so I have two options for reserving a space and scheduling my event. The first is I know when my event should take place, help me find a location, or I know where my event should take place, help me choose a time. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to say I know where my event should take place, help me choose a time. And I'm going to say that I would like my event to take place in Prosser. So I've typed in Prosser and I'll hit go. And you can see it has this loading bar that will become a drop down menu. The reason it loaded and gave me a drop down menu is the system found every location on campus that has Prosser in the title. And I'll choose the auditorium as opposed to the lobby. So I've selected Prosser Auditorium as my location and now I'm going to say show me this location's availability. Here the calendaring system shows me a scheduling grid so I can see the days and times that Prosser is available versus unavailable. And you can actually see this pending area where I had started to schedule an event and I stopped. So I can see that it's pending. Um, I'm going to skip over that and I'm just going to schedule something new and say I want my event to take place Saturday, March 16th, starting at 5 p.m. So I have select that place in the grid. And now I can start entering information for my event. And I'll walk you through the scheduling wizard. I won't take you step by step, but you will see each page. One thing that is worth noting as we go through is that each time I select a space, you see instructions populate on the right. So if at any point you are going through the wizard and you don't understand what it's asking you, uh, make sure to consult the instructions on the right. Anything that is required of me will have an asterisk or it simply won't allow me to move forward. Here on the timing page, I do want to highlight that what the instructions are telling you over here is that you want to use actual start and end times for your event. So what that means is when I was in the scheduling grid and said, I want to start my reservation at 5 p.m., that means my event in Prosser is starting at 5. So my guest presenter is taking the stage and we are kicking off the event at 5 p.m. And I can edit the event times to say, I know that the person is speaking and I know that there's a Q&A and all of that is going to take us to 6.30 p.m. So at 6.30 p.m. we are finishing up, people are clapping and people are leaving. So that is my actual event time. And then you can choose to add additional time. So if you need time to set something up or just time to be in the space, you can add that. And you can see now the reservation is changing. 
So the event duration is truly an hour and 30 minutes, but I have the space reserved for an hour and 45 minutes. The reason that actual times are so important is the members of the event logistics committee can go in and say, okay, we have an event from 5 to 6.30 and that event needs, for example, media services. The media services team will go in and say, they need 30 minutes to set up their equipment and can reserve things as we go. If we don't know your actual event start and actual event end, we might reserve a space for too long or too little of a time depending on your needs. So it's just important to all be communicating and all be on the same page as far as actual timing. And I'll go ahead and get off my soapbox now and keep moving us forward. Here's the location page. The location's already been selected at the beginning, so I can move forward. Here I can make a distinction between schedule, scheduler and requester. So right now I'm listed as both, but say I'm scheduling this event on behalf of someone else. I can be the scheduler, but that someone else can be the requester. So say I'm helping out Craig who wants to show a movie in Prosser. I've scheduled this for him, but in reality this is his event. So I just want to make that distinction so people know who they can ask questions, you know, regarding the event or maybe Craig can come in and make an edit and he doesn't have to keep going through me. This page is really important, selecting requirements for the event. So just go through and select anything that you might need. You are required to select at least one, knowing that one of them is I have no needs other than the use of the space as is. But we certainly invite you to think about this page and really select what it is you think you're going to need on your journey of creating this event. At the very end, I'm going to agree to some terms and conditions and hit save. It is important to remember to hit save because that's going to submit the event. Once the event is saved, I will see that I'm getting a confirmation. My request has been successfully submitted and know that it has been successfully submitted. You need to wait to hear from people to see that your event has been confirmed and they will reach out via email. So that is the basic of how I use 25 Live here at Moravian to schedule an event and reserve a space. If you have any questions, you're welcome to email events at moravian.edu and they can point you toward any resources or information that you might need past this tutorial. And we also have some other tutorials to answer some other more specific questions. But hopefully this was a helpful start.